We experience the world through touch. It's how we connect with people. When you love someone, you hug them, you kiss them, you hold their hand. Now imagine a world where you can't touch anyone and no one touches you. That's where I lived for 18 years. I became an invisible man. My name is Andrew Goss and I live in Paradise, Newfoundland. When I was 17 years old, I felt invincible. I was about to graduate from high school and was going into the army. My goal was to become a peacekeeper and represent my country. My hopes uh, when joining the army were really to be all that I could be. Wearing the uniform, uh, it really meant something. Uh, it meant that I was a part of something bigger than myself. When you uh, travel together, work together, sleep together, eat together, it becomes your identity uh, by and large. I had family, friends. I thought I would fall in love, get married, and then I got diagnosed. I was getting ready to go on my first, uh, we used to call them call-outs. Uh, when you're in the Army Reserve and you're going away for any uh, period of time, it's almost like a contract. I was uh, getting ready to go away, and I felt a little scab on my left elbow. It was maybe the size of my small fingernail. It wasn't normal. My family doctor has known me for a, a great many years. So when I went in and uh, he looked at it, uh, it was very matter of fact. There was no drama. He just looked at me and said, oh, that's psoriasis. And I said, okay, make it go away. And he said, no, that's chronic. And I honestly didn't know what chronic meant. Psoriasis is a autoimmune disease. It presents itself uh, predominantly in the skin. With psoriasis, uh, that process is constantly building up and building up a scaly layer, and eventually it will leave just raw skin underneath. Heartbreaking to see your son like that and not being able to do something for him. Andrew we used to hide psoriasis by wearing long sleeves because a lot of people are afraid. They think that this is really contagious. I would go to work for the day. I would be in physical agony most of the day. The blood and the, the leaching from the lesions would soak into the clothes, my socks. I would come home. I would have to tear that clothes off. You can imagine the amount of laundry. I was always quite prepared to serve my country, uh, both domestically and abroad. The United Nations were looking for people who, with the qualifications that I had to uh, do a six-month peacekeeping tour in Cyprus. I applied. I had uh, quite, a, quite a good opportunity to go. But when I had the, uh, the medical done, they saw that I had psoriasis. And I was told at that point that it precluded me from uh, participating. All it did was really piss me off that a disease that I have absolutely no control over has caused me to lose what I saw as a great opportunity. I left the Army in 1994. That set me back because up to that point, it had just been a personal struggle that, that I was able to hide and contain. You give up doing treatments. You give up looking into the disease. Not because you're disinterested in yourself, but you're afraid to hope again. I met Andrew at Tim, Hort <laughs> Tim Hortons. Uh, I was working there during university. I mean, I fell in love. Boom. Wow. There is the most amazing human being ever. We, we just, I don't know, I guess we kind of hit it off right from the start, and it, we had a lot in common. So it just, it was natural, I think, for us to just share everything. I spent a lot of time preparing her for 
what psoriasis was, what it looks like, what it feels like. There was never a thought of, oh, you know, I can't deal with this, I can't be around this. It was, it was part of who he was, so, I mean, it was, there was no, you know, if I wanted to be with him, then that was just gonna be part of it. And she has never wavered, not an inch, which is only a part of what makes her remarkable. We were engaged, I think it was like three months later, and then it was a year after that when we got married. It is very difficult to feel comfortable physically, romantically, but you still want to be together as, as a couple, as a husband and wife. I just started to recede. I know it was always dark. If he had to get up in the night, it was never a turn on a light. She had always been completely OK. It, it was not off-putting to her. She would always reiterate, you know, it, it doesn't bother me. And I said to her, no, but it bothers me. I don't want to see it. At night, I used to have to scratch myself pretty well all over what I could reach with a steel comb or brush to peel away the scale and pour vinegar or lemon juice over it and make the skin burn. And I know that sounds uh, very strange or even sadistic, but you can sleep if your skin is burning. You cannot sleep if you're itchy. It will consume you. There was one morning uh, he woke up. I remember looking over and he was sitting on the side of the bed kind of slumped, like dejected. He was upset. It's probably my lowest point. She asked me, she said, what's wrong? And I was just, I was defeated. Disease wins. I just said, I'm tired of being alive. I'm done. It's horrible. It's horrible to see someone that you love hate the fact that they're still alive because of their skin. I mean, it's... Disease is a side effect of being human. We are all a patient of something at some point. Hope is a very, very tenuous place to be once you've had it removed a number of times. Dr. Gulliver came to me 10 years ago, and he had a bigger than usual smile. He said, uh, Andrew, there's a new treatment uh, coming down the pipe. I've been poked and prodded. I have had skin biopsies. I had nothing left to try. And I had nothing to lose. So I was enrolled as patient 001. He tried everything. If, if it was suggested as this is a possible treatment, then he tried it. At first it was, you know, am I just imagining it? Oh, is it all in my mind? He was almost afraid to say, I think it's working. <laughs> and about 16 weeks later, I was clear. <clears throat> There's times emotion arrives and I, I don't even uh, perceive it coming. Uh, it's, but clear, clear, it was gone. He didn't want to put on clothes anymore. <laughs> it was like suddenly he got out of jail and he was free and we just, we went and did everything we couldn't do up to that point. Sometimes you, you need to relearn how to live. I used to be quite concerned if psoriasis would ever develop in either of my children. 
And again, there's, there's always the possibility that it could. Years ago, I would have been terrified. The treatments that are available to us now, I mean, they transform the landscape. It changes the game. Oh, Andrew, how are you? Doing nice well. to see you. Welcome. Good, good to see you. Thanks. How's everything going? Psoriasis still doing uh, well? It is doing exactly what we wanted to do, under control. Oh, fantastic. Andrew is probably one of the strongest advocates for psoriasis I've ever met. He has created a patient advocacy group, which has allowed many psoriasis patients to learn that it can be treated, it can be controlled. What kept me going, even in the darkest time? Two things. My incredibly awesome and amazing and beautiful wife. And just hope that there was a light at the end of the tunnel.